Hey guys, hey, I'm doing a, not a tag, but like a tag-ish video. Emily Noel did this video a while back, and I wrote stuff down, and I totally forgot about it, and I wanted to do it. So this is pretty much about brands that I'm excited about, and brands I'm not. Like, when these brands put stuff out, I'm like, ooh, yay, like, I want to get it, or look into it, at least. Um, and there's the brands I'm just like... I don't really care. So I have quite a long list here. This is not just makeup, it's makeup, skincare, hair care, stuff like that. First up, of course, you guys are already going to know, can you guess? Glossier, of course. I mean, I work with the brand, that's part of it. Um, but I really love all their products. Like, there's nothing they've come out with that I was like totally disappointed by. Like, even the stuff that didn't work for me, I could see how it could work for others. But then there's other brands that bring out something and I'm like, what? <laughs> Next is Milani. Milani is a brand that I've always really gravitated toward. I really like their packaging in the first place. Gold is very like classic and chic. It's not like over the top gold. And they just come out with really nice products. Like everything with them is really high quality. Not luxury, but like it looks not cheap. And, and I don't know, I just really like most of their stuff. Their lipsticks are really like comparable to more high end products. Their brow products are really great. Milani is definitely a brand I always am on the lookout for what's new with them. Like there's like four things from Milani. I have my list. Milani is definitely a brand I'm always kind of like, ooh, what, what, did they come out with something new? CoverGirl, which I kind of put like a star next to because CoverGirl only recently made it onto this list and they went cruelty free, but their products aren't that groundbreaking to me. Um, I really like their mascaras and a couple other of their products, but nothing is really like, you know, makes me like gasp and like so excited. It's just more of like if they do come out with something excited, I will exciting, I will try it because of the brand. Okay, next, Fourth Ray. Now Fourth Ray is a skincare brand made by ColourPop. It's like their sister company. I only have one product from them, but they really intrigue me. Like I'm always like I follow them on Instagram, I'm always interested in seeing what they have. Now it's not something I personally will go out and buy, but it's very intriguing. Like it's something I want to share with other people who I think their products would work for. Derma E is a huge one. It's not even just their new products, but like I always go back and want to look at their older stuff. Derma E is a vegan and cruelty-free skincare brand. They have hair products, body products, um, SPF, things like that. I actually recently ordered two cleansers to try from them. Apparently CeraVe is going to start selling in China. What the heck? Derma E is a definitely a very, not unique brand, but a very easy brand to see what works for you. It's something I think is very user-friendly. They have their collections for hydration, for acne, for aging, and firming. They have products that I just really like. I like the packaging of their products, the size. You're getting a lot for your money. They do have products ranging from like the $10, $15, $20 range up all the way to like $40. It depends on the ingredients. So they really do charge based on ingredients. Like there's so many brands, all their cleansers are $10 or something. But if the ingredients in one of their cleansers cost more and is more um, hard to find, they're going to charge a little bit more. And I actually like that because you're, you kind of know what you're getting. When you read the ingredients list, you trust it. And that's kind of why I like that brand so much. Hair care, Kristen S. Yep, I already have like three of her products in my hair right now. I love Kristen S. Every time she comes out with something new, even if it's something that I know isn't for me. Like if she comes out with like a hair oil, which I can't really use because my hair is so thin and fine. I'm like, ooh, I want to try it. And if I don't know, if I know I won't like it, I have to go to the store and smell it. <laughs> like, I must have like five or six or seven, seven products. I've tried like ten. I'm just always like, ooh, I want that. I want that. The packaging, oh, everything from her. I just love it. If you don't follow her Instagram, you should. She is killing it with like inclusivity. There's so many brands that like you you know they're like for women with straight hair. They're for women with frizzy hair. She has stuff for every kind of hair type and I really just love that and like it's just easy to try stuff. I feel like a lot of her stuff works for so many people and I really trust her. She's just so honest and oh, I love everything she does. The other one is Makeup Revolution. I think I have like one product from their brand but they're very um not innovative. I don't want to say innovative but unique. They just they're so broad of a brand. They do colorful eyeshadow palettes. They do neutrals. They do skincare. I mean they do everything and I just find that very interesting when one brand kind of does at all and they do come out with that's the thing they don't come out with innovative products they copy other brands innovative products so i like to see their take on it i just find it interesting it cosmetics I love it cosmetics. I don't have many products from them, but I just find them to be very high quality, very um, tested. Like I feel like everything that they do is scientific and they really try to get proven results and they do have a lot of ingredients in their product. They're not like a natural brand and I know that, 
but I do think their products are effective and they are pricey but they are effective and they're just a brand I think that is more innovative like they do come out with more unique products in my opinion the Shea Moisture now I only have a couple products from Shea Moisture but I really like their motto <laughs> that's not it but just like the vibe of their whole brand they do a lot of like donations collaborations with with um, organizations charities and they have really nice products that are mostly natural they I don't really know they just like make me feel good <laughs> They're not, I don't want to say they're super innovative, but they, they, they have their own take on skincare and body care. NYX. NYX is a brand that I've always kind of been intrigued by. It's a brand I always walk by. They have so many products. And I always look at it. I don't buy much from them. I have maybe four products from them, and I like all of them. But, I don't know, I just feel like they, again, aren't the most creative or innovative brand, but they do come out with, like, classic great products like their taupe blush non-stop knock it out of the park like contour color and their lip liners like their products are good quality vegan are they vegan i know they're cruelty free some of them are vegan right and i don't know i just really like when they come out with something, something new i'm kind of interested in it i feel like they're very like flying under the radar brand like people don't talk about them that much i did have wet and wild on this list and crossed it out if you don't know the drama, I mean, there's plenty of videos about it, plenty of articles, um, Wet n Wild lied about being cruelty free, even if they didn't, and they're coming out and saying, oh, we are so cruelty free, Peter is still supporting them as cruelty free, they've been selling in China for over a year, and they didn't tell anyone, and I just find that really sketchy and slimy, and it makes me not trust them as much as I like their products, and I will use up what I already have, because I don't want to be wasteful, I'm not buying their products right now um maybe I will in the future but I just found the way they handled the whole situation to be very slimy and like very like hidden secretive like they could have just come out in the beginning and said we're working with China to work on their animal testing policies and you know right now it's kind of iffy if we're really cruelty free but we just wanted to let you guys know you know the deal and they didn't do that they hit it and then even when people found out about it they were like sketchy about it i don't like that it just it turned me off the body shop the body shop is so under underrated for makeup i love their bronzer um i know everyone loves their like body products and their body cream or butter or whatever but i think their makeup is super underrated they have kind of pretty unique products pretty good ingredients and i just think they're really underrated and like there's something that when they come out with something new i'm like ooh, what the heck that's that's they're thinking i have a few products that are like in the middle of the road but i don't usually shop for them but i am definitely like ooh, that's interesting and then when i go to the store i look at them and hold them for a while and put them back um and that would be maybelline because they're not cruelty free neutrogena again not cruelty free but they do come out with good products that i like if they were cruelty free i'd be all about that life smashbox is a brand i'm definitely intrigued with um i recently got a palette from them and i'm obsessed with it like a face palette and um i just feel like they do pretty cool things Sushin's formula is a brand that's just not didn't work for me a ton i think their foundation the healthy foundation is like one of the only products i've liked from them ever they're just not my cup of tea like so many people love their products but like for me i'm just like i don't see I, they don't work for me like i'm excited about them and i want to try them but almost every product i've tried didn't work for me even the ones that people rave about so i don't know what that's about but i still you know look out for their new stuff flower beauty De uh demi moore no drew barrymore's brand i love drew barrymore um i love what she's doing like i just really love her whole vibe the products are so cute and like they just seem really great but i do feel like because i they're not sold anywhere super close to me that i don't really get a chance to see them and they're something that um i don't know i just don't really shop i think i used to love her lip glosses and that's like the only thing i can remember but i do every time something comes out i'm like oh that's so interesting those are the brands i love and then we're going to talk about some brands i don't love that it's not like i hate them they're just ones that like, when they come out with something new i kind of like pass it by like i just don't really take attention to it one would be pretty much anything not cruelty free burt's bees i'm allergic to almost every product they make l'oreal chemicals cruelty free just no ColourPop. ColourPop recently came out since i wrote this list came out with like cream blush sticks and highlighter sticks and i totally there's like three of them i already like wrote down that i want to get eventually um so that was really interesting i was really intrigued by that but pretty much since they came out with their foundation like two years ago there's nothing they've done that i've been like excited about that i couldn't get from another brand other than those sticks nothing from them really blows my mind i feel like it's all kind of just like 
people are gonna buy it because you know it works but it's nothing like new you know elf elf i actually recently did a haul from them and since the whole went wild thing i have been more interested in elf but still when they come out with new products i'm not usually like super intrigued i'm not like ooh, i want to try that it's more like let's see what other people think and if it's been around for a while and it doesn't get discontinued maybe we'll check it out urban decay Urban K is a brand everyone loves, but for me, I don't know what it is. Like, I like the packaging and I can see the appeal, but it's just not appealing to me. I mean, it's just overpriced. It's a flush. Who, who, do you ever, have you even heard of flush? Flush is a brand made by Revlon. It's kind of like mid-range pricing. And I don't know, all their stuff just looks too, like, greasy for me. Like, I don't know if it's a word flush, but like, I don't know. It's just not my cup of tea. Honest Beauty. Nope. Everything I've tried from Honest Beauty has not worked out. It's not for me. I'm either allergic to it or it's just kind of like, why is this a product? I just don't like it. Do you guys like stuff from Honest Beauty? I'm sure they're like kid stuff and their body stuff and like house stuff is good, but the like makeup beauty stuff, I'm just kind of like confused about. Kylie, Courtney, Kim Kardashian, I don't mind the Kardashians. I have zero problem with them. I know some people hate them, some people love them. I'm like kind of just like, I used to watch their show in like 2009. Now I just feel like they're t too much. Like, okay, like every time I go on Cosmo's Snapchat story, it's about them. Like there's a little bit more important things going on than why they named their baby, but they named it. Um, that's my problem. Like they get too much attention. But I don't have a problem with them. Like, I'm sure their beauty products are fine. I've heard people rave about them. Um, but I'm just never, I've never went on any of their websites. I don't think. I've never been interested in a Kylie lip kit or, like, buying any of their products. Like, it's not like them. It's not like it's them. I think it's just the price, to be honest. NYC. Like, have you even heard from them in, like, 100 years? NARS. No thank you they were cruelty free and they went back on it that's kind of what really bothers me is when a brand's never been cruelty free okay but when a brand was cruelty free and then they like turn their back on it that's what it like rubs me the wrong way revlon I mean, revlon's been out forever it's been like one of the first one like one of the first brands that was like a big thing and i feel like at one point they did come out with some pretty interesting products like during like the nearly naked phase i had a powder from them that i really liked their lip butters were great and i feel like ever since they discontinued their lip butters that everyone loved they're just kind of like, they are what they are. They have maybe some of their classic products. And I guess people like their like lip products. But I don't know, like I just don't hear anything about them. There was like a random new mascara from them that came out. And I never hear anyone talking about it. Like I see it at the store, like a new display. But I never ever, ever hear anyone talking about it. I just don't really get what's going on with them. Like did they get like a new run, like a person running the company that's just like, whatever, we are what we are. Two more, Tarte and Too Faced. I don't know what it is. These two brands are like, they like, I don't want to say people like obsess over them, but they kind of do. And so many people's videos are about them. And I'm just like, I'll watch it because I like the person I'm watching. But I'm like, I don't, I've never really had an urge to buy their products. Not recently anyway. Do I have anything from these brands? I don't think I do. But that's my thing. This video has been very, very long. So I'm sorry about that. Yeah, these are the brands I love and the brands I don't love. What do you guys think? Do you guys disagree? Do you guys agree? Let me know in a comment. Thank you for watching. Subscribe to see more from me and I'll see you next time.